think I've got the chair a little too close. Do you get tired? No, seriously. You know, just normal human being that you are. Do you get tired? Weary? Not burned out, but just kind of, you know, tired of doing the same old thing. Sometimes in ministry, you find people, especially pastors and people in ministry that forget they can pass it off or pass it on to someone else to do some of the things that they committed themselves to do, getting tired, weary, almost burned out. You see, it's not that they don't love their job, because they do. It's not that they don't enjoy doing what it is that God has told them to do, or inspired them, commissioned them, sent them out, or called them to do, because they do. They recognize the weakness of the flesh. They recognize the temptations of the spirit, of the soul. But there's also a time where, to put it bluntly, they get tired. And that's not always planned for or appreciated as much as we should in the ministry. Because Jesus himself, after ministering, lots of times were given just a little snippet, a little bit of insight, so to speak, into his personal life. And it says that after the crowds, he pulled away or he went into the desert you know, to be alone with his disciples. He went because he was wearied. You know, we just get that little kind of like, you know, perspective where we recognize, oh, even Jesus got tired. You see, that's what happens when you deal with people. You get tired. <laughs> they wear you out, really. And a lot of times, pastors or ministers or preachers or teachers or people that are involved in public service or dealing with the public will put on a professional attitude. They're able to put on this outer shell, this caricature of themselves that isn't the real person. And a lot of times the scary thing is, is this hypocritos or this false image that's out there becomes the real image the person doesn't recognize they're doing. And they don't know sometimes that they're so good at hiding themselves they become the image rather than the person. You see, it's easy to put out an image because once you walk into the pulpit or you walk into the ministry or you even turn on the camera for video, the Holy Spirit comes in. He just says, hey, I'm not wasting this time. You know, I'm making use of it. So the person who's sharing the Word of God or enlivening it or quickening it to you or explaining it, teaching it, preaching it, relating it in some personal, intimate way or doing something with the Bible then they get, because God does it, this energy, so to speak, from the Holy Spirit to do for that moment what God wants them to do. But then like a rag that's been wrung out or a wet noodle that just flops, once they get done, boom, they crash and burn. Because the person has weaknesses where the power comes from is the Holy Spirit. And when that person is inspired, oh, of course, like anyone else, they're able to relate and to share and to t care and to do things that in that moment they have the ability. But the reality is, when they're done, they're tired. You may see sometimes and think that a pastor or your favorite preacher may be a hypocrite because you may have seen him in the pulpit where he was like dynamic and like, wow! And then suddenly you see him out on the street and he's like, what a jerk. Well, he's human. And he's a human being. And he may be weary. He may be tired. He may not be full of the Holy Spirit, so to speak, as he was when he was in the pulpit when you were inspired by him. And that's the difference between sometimes the minister and the man. And you have to be careful that you don't mix the two together and make the mistake of criticizing a person who may be flopping or failing or f fleeing from some weariness they have. And then they're seen and they're like, oh, man, that guy, i never going to trust him in the pulpit again. Well, you don't go by what the person is. You go by what the Word says. You 
take what you can of what's being shared and related. You understand that the vessel is not the message. You see, that's the difference. This candlestick holder is not the candle. It's a candlestick holder. It holds a candle. That's what it does. That's all it's for. I'm not real impressed with it right now because it's got wax all over it. It needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be kind of like shined up. As a matter of fact, it even needs some candles put in it. Not just old used wax. And that's kind of what happens lots of times when people criticize ministries or ministers. They don't treat the man as a human being that God died for. That they're a person, not just a preacher. They are people, not just pastors. That they are human beings with fallibilities, not just men and women of God. Jesus was like that. Jesus knew his limitations. He knew he needed to get away from people at times, to be away from the congregations. You know, Chuck Smith said something interesting one time at the height of his you know, success was that he wanted to leave Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa. He was praying about going down to Arizona, you know, and doing a, another ministry there. You know, something completely different, well, maybe not different, but some, just removed from the big Calvary, so to speak. And you know, sometimes I wonder if maybe he might have been blessed doing it because he might have found rest. But irregardless, he still was used by God and became the great apostle that he is, you know, or pastor of pastors, whatever you want to call him, you know. Ministry went on and things accomplished and, you know, good and bad have come out of it, you know, and there's been positive and negative, you know, of all ministries like any ministry or any movement. And so Likewise, each and every one of us have to recognize our own limitations, that at times we're given choices. We'll still be blessed. Don't get me wrong. We still will be accomplishing things, but it may not be all that you potentially could do or see and experience with God himself personally. And that's probably where you have to take a step back to get away, not just to retreat, you know, like the Bible retreats where you, oh boy, you know, I'm going to be a, uh, you know, like the speaker at a Bible retreat. And that's not getting away. No, you need times where you just say, hey, I'm tired. I, I, I need a break. I need to stop what I'm doing and take a look at God again and have one-on-one -on -one with Him rather than just minister to ministry, you know, and have Him inspire me to do what I'm doing. And so, when you look at it that way, you recognize Jesus got tired. You recognize that Jesus pulled away. You recognize that Jesus was asleep in the boat when the storms were coming. That Jesus himself had the weaknesses of the flesh, though he did not give in to them. He also got tired and wearied. He also needed to be alone and away from the crowds, the noise and the haste and the waste and all the things that go on when you deal with people. Allow yourself that. Allow yourself times to be weary, to be tired, to be not the 100% you think you always should be or you think that, oh, Christians don't get burned out. Well, the, they don't get burned out. They get bummed out. And bum out leads to burnout. So rather than get bummed out and have to be challenged by that place of, well, why am I bummed out? Which way should I go with this emotion? You can plan for the times when you're tired, you know, and you need to rest. Not just, you know, go into the Word and get, you know, like mega, you know, mega studies and, you know, work yourself into being a slave. Because that's a lot of times what men of God do. They'll jump in from one thing to another thing and another thing. Yesterday, I was pretty much doing the same thing in that way, you know, respect was that when I was tired of posting, I do plants. When I was tired of plants, I do cleaning house. When I was tired of cleaning house, I'd go back to posting. When I was tired of posting, I'd go back to organization. When I was tired of organizing, I'd go back to collecting some other things and doing other things. And I'd just bounce from one thing to another, doing pieces of each one and accomplishing it. But at the end of the day, I was like, huh. my knee was killing me because I had overworked the limitation of my knee. That's where we all have to recognize the limitations God places on each one of us and our ministry. Mega ministries often are not really blessed. They're just growing as a monstrosity that, you know, it's just something that just keeps overgrowing rather than being trimmed. 
God prunes, and you should see that happening in ministry. If it's not, then you may see just a megalith, and if you look underneath, you're going to see root rot. Because someplace in time, even mega ministries experience root rot, because they haven't pruned themselves of a lot of the kind of weird stuff that's gotten attached to their ministries, you know, kind of some of the things that are going on behind the scenes that nobody can see until suddenly it's a massive, you know, split or some type of shift or focus or refocus. And they never see it coming because they haven't pruned themselves to be quality, not quantity. And resting, not testing the limitations of what God's grace has been given to you for. Know your boundaries. Set for yourself a not a box per se, but a circle, so to speak, so that you know when you go full circle back to the place you've been, you're still in the faith of what you once were excited about, the joy of the Lord being your strength. That you're still as on fire as you were the moment that you started the ministry till the end of your ministry. Don't let yourself overgrow or over step the boundaries that God has placed on your ministry because there's other people to do what you're doing. There are thousands of people around the world doing the same thing you're doing and accomplishing and purpose to do. And all of them, likewise, are being taught the same thing of knowing when to rest, when to be still, when to walk forward, when to step back, when to be one with God and to know when he is leading and when you need to be sleeping. <laughs> I mean, isn't that really the bottom line? Don't you know that sometimes getting a good night's sleep, you know, after being so on fire, is really a good thing and not a bad thing? Rest in the Lord. Rest and get away from the people. Rest and take the time to pass the test of God giving you more than you can handle so that you would let go of trying to control all that comes into your life. After all, he loves you. He just wants to watch over you while maybe you're sleeping or taking the time to be still and maybe no, he's got, he's got it under control, so he's got, you know, let go, let God. Do that in the ministry. You may find it takes off even without you steering the ship, so to speak. Be still and rest. Remember, Jesus got weary. Jesus took the time to be away from it all. Maybe that's what you need to do today. Step away. Away with God.